Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be discussing the difficulty settings in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now if you've ever played the originals, you will know that there are some stark differences in difficulty between Diamond and Pearl and Platinum. And with the meshing of different features from Diamond and Pearl and from Platinum in these remakes, I thought it was worth the discussion of how hard are these games going to be? Are they going to take elements from Diamond and Pearl? Are they going to incorporate some of the more challenging, more complex elements from Platinum? How are they going to mesh this all together into an experience that makes Sinnoh represented well? With that being said, let's jump right into things. Now, if you have not played the original games, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, you might not be aware of this, but there were some pretty sizable differences in terms of th features in the story of the game that made the overall experience more difficult. And this is going to come down to a lot of interesting discussions that Ilka has probably had as to what they're including from Platinum in this game and what they're keeping the same from Diamond and Pearl. And I want to hit on a couple of these examples from the games to talk about how this could impact the difficulty of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now, before we go any further, I think it's worth pointing out that for a lot of Pokemon fans, including myself, Platinum, Diamond, and Pearl were probably some of the more difficult Pokemon games growing up. I personally never really had a problem with Gen 3. Gen 2 was always a little bit harder for me because there was a bit of a level curve. Eventually, once you hit a certain point in the game, pretty much the almost to the halfway point, there was a level spike among NPCs and you really had to start leveling up your Pokemon quickly to keep up with them. There were also the introduction of berries and different items that trainers could use, making the overall adventure more difficult. There were also some challenging boss battles. Whitney is the famous one, and her mill tank is incredibly challenging if you do not come prepared with the right team. But what took the cake always was Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. And where it really shined was its gym leader fights and its Elite Four. Diamond and Pearl's Elite Four was difficult. And Diamond and Pearl's Elite Four was made harder because the trainers in the Elite Four didn't use their typings always. It was really weird because the Pokedex in Diamond and Pearl was not perfect, as I've covered in a couple videos on this channel recently over the, over the summer. But what they would do is they would take Pokemon that had types of moves that fit what, about what uh, type of Pokemon they were meant to be as an Elite Four member, and they would include those Pokemon on their teams. So you would have, like, Flint using Pokemon that have fire type moves or could be like fire adjacent, but weren't actually fire types. This would make taking on the Elite Four a lot harder because you had to plan for a different type of trainer battle. On top of the Elite Four, Cynthia is an incredibly hard champion. She comes out of the gate with Spiritomb, which at the time had no typing that was super effective against it. And on her team, she had a whole bevy of powerful Pokemon. She had Lucario. She had Garchomp. She had Milotic. She was a tough cookie. And if you could beat her, of course, you would go on to win the game and beat the Elite Four and beat the champion. It was a celebration and everyone was happy. But that is a hard fight. Cynthia is one of the hardest champions in all of Pokemon. Pokemon, and you can see why. But not only was she difficult, but some of the other boss battles in the games were made harder in Platinum as opposed to in Diamond and Pearl. Actually, flip that. They were harder in Diamond and Pearl than they were in Platinum, and that had to do with how you progressed through the region. Before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos, and hopefully, obviously, enjoying them, aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free. You can unsubscribe at any time. It would really do a ton to show me that you guys are enjoying these brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl videos and that you want to see more in the future because we are just coming down to a couple weeks until BDSP releases in November, and I am very excited about it. One of the differences between Diamond and Pearl and Platinum is how the gyms in the middle part of the game were handled. You took on Fantina at a different point in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl than you did in Platinum. Now, Platinum was a bit more of a callback to Gold, Silver, and Crystal. For those of you who do not know, in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, which was the second generation of Pokemon games, you had a lot more access to choose what gym leaders you took on and in what order. In Pokemon Platinum, you could come in and take on, in Diamond and Pearl, you could go in and completely pass Fantina and keep moving on through the region. In Pokemon Platinum, that was a little bit different. You took on Fantina right as you progressed through Hardhome City. 
That changes the difficulty because it allows you to choose, okay, am I going to take on a ghost type gym leader so early, it's your third gym badge, or am I going to wait until I level up my Pokemon a little bit more and I have access to more Pokemon to build my team? Not only is this strategy, but it makes the game more difficult. This is a criticism that Pokemon fans have long had towards the way Game Freak structures their regions. There's a lot of types that are just because of their advantages and their disadvantages, seem more difficult to the early game. So for example, we've never really had a dragon type gym early. We've never had a poison type gym early. We've never had a fairy type gym early, even though it we haven't had fairy as recently. Gen 6 is when we got it. There are a lot of these types that are more difficult for you to plan for that Game Freak typically likes to wait until the later gyms to include as a challenge. In Diamond and Pearl, this was interesting because some of the early gyms were those cookie cutter basics. You had a rock gym first, you had a grass gym second with Gardenia, and then you hit Hard Home City. And depending on the game you played, you had to face Fantina right there. And then you faced a fighting type gym and you went back to some basic ones after that, water, steel, ice. But the, the order in which you challenge the gyms contributes a lot to the difficulty of the game. Another thing that contributes to that difficulty is Team Galactic. Now, I don't know about you guys, but Team Galactic was always more difficult for me than the common uh, team boss fights. Not Cyrus. Cyrus is up to par with some of the other boss fights, but some of the more, some of the admins, some of the admins teams were incredibly difficult. If you went through Floraroma Town and you went to the Valley Windworks, you had to deal with, was her Mars? You had to deal with Mars, and Mars had her Skun Tank. Skuntank was a difficult Pokemon to deal with. It would always wipe out my team. It was not a fun time. You also had to deal with Jupiter's Perugly later on in the game. A lot of this is just Pokemon that you don't typically come across. And that's one of the reasons why Gen 4 is so good, is because you have a long journey. And when you have a long journey, you're going to have to deal with a lot of different story elements. And Team Galactic has a really good edge to it. They're using a lot of Pokemon that don't exactly have the most common type matchups to beat. They also use Pokemon like Bronzong, which depending on the ability are immune to certain types of attacks. Bronzong has two different abilities. If he has a certain ability, fire type moves are pretty much ineffective against him, or he can have levitate and then rock type moves and earth and ground type moves aren't really effective against him. So they are very varied in their what they can do and what you are effective against. This goes to say that Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, there was a very difficulty to them. Platinum really refined a lot of these trainer battles. It really refined the leveling system. And of course, you do have access to the experience share in these games, but it wasn't, it isn't the more modern experience share where it levels up your whole team. Platinum, Diamond, and Pearl are a different beast. They are a lot harder of game than typical Pokemon games. And which is why the thumbnail might be a little bit misleading, I understand, but I think Diamond and Pearl are pretty difficult games. And I think Platinum in some ways makes it easier and in other ways makes it more difficult. So the balance that Ilka is gonna have to find is what are we gonna take from each? Are we gonna take the Elite Four from Diamond and Pearl, which is a bit more varied in terms of a quote unquote type matchup, whereas they're using Pokemon that aren't respective to their types, or are they gonna go the route of the Platinum games where Flint used fire types, um, you had to deal with these Pokemon in certain orders. Cynthia's team is a little bit different. In, uh, in Diamond and Pearl, I believe she has a Gastrodon. In Platinum, she doesn't have a Gastrodon. So there are these varied things that make the game more challenging. And I would love to know what you guys think. Do you prefer an easier Pokemon game to a harder one? I've heard this debate in the Pokemon community for years now. People are very varied in terms of what they think. Some people enjoy the fact that you can just cruise through Pokemon games, play at your own leisure, and experience the story, build up your team. Whereas other people want that challenge. They want that edge. I've been playing Metroid Dread this week. It came out last week. That's a Nintendo game that is difficult. You have to learn those systems, and then you have to apply your attacks properly in order to beat those bosses and get through the areas. Some people want Pokemon to be more like that. They want it to be more more thought provoking. They want the NPCs to have more of a, a varied move set and a varied set of actions and what they do against you. So what do you want to see out of Diamond and Pearl's remakes? I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. As I mentioned before, it does a ton to show me that you're enjoying the videos and that you want to see more. With that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.